Hi, I'm MR Morrison and in this video today, in this video, I will be sharing with you how you can create and configure Azure Active Directory users in Azure SQL database. This video was taken from my course on Udemy. The link will be in the description below. If you choose to purchase it this month, you'll get a whopping 40% off. So with that said, let's get right into this video. In this lecture, we're going to be creating an Azure AD user on our SQL Server database. So here, we're going to be logging in as the SQL admin. So ensure you specify your server name, the authentication type as SQL Server Authentication. Your login as SQL Admin or whatever you created your admin name when you're deploying the server. Specify your password and connect. In order to create a user, we need a new query editor. So select New Query. And you want to ensure that you're using the Udemy DP300 database. So from the drop down here, select Udemy DP300. Or you could have also expanded databases. Right click on the database and then select new query. So if you are familiar with the on-premise SQL server, you know that you could right click security and then select new login. And then you'll get a window to create a new login. However, if you select new login here, you'll get a script to create the login. So let me head over back to the blank query window. So when you're creating the user from Active Directory, you need to specify from the external login. So the script is really simple. So it's create user, the name of the user that you want to create, right? Don't mind my long name, this was automatically created. And then you'll say from external provider. And then execute. However, I am not expecting this to work. So here I got a syntax error because I'm using the period which is an illegal character. So to avoid this I need to specify the square brackets. Now let me execute again. This time I get a different error message. The principal right could not be created. Only connections established with Active Directory accounts can create other Active Directory users. This means that I can only create an Active Directory principal using an Active Directory account. So what needs to happen now is that instead of logging in as a SQL admin, I need to log in as the Azure Active Directory user first and then I need to create the AAD user. So I'm going to right click on the server and disconnect. Now select connect again, database engine. Now instead of specifying SQL Server Authentication, I need to specify Azure Active Directory with MFA. So here I'm going to attempt to connect with Adrian Apartments login. Now select connect. Here I also have trouble logging in. This is because the user does not exist. Now so what do I do? So here I am going to close this. Select OK. So I did this intentionally so you will see what will happen when you do not enable Azure Active Directory authentication on your database instance. Now what we need to do to resolve all of this is to enable Active Directory authentication and then set an AAD admin. So let's head over back to our portal. So from your resources, you can search SQL servers. So the servers is the one with the letter gear icon. Select the server. It is the server that we want to make the change to and not the database. Now from the server, what you want to do is go to Azure Active Directory settings, right? And then here we're going to set admin. So this is how we are going to basically create the first Azure AD admin within the database. So I'm going to select Adrian Apartment and then select. Now here I have the option to support Azure Active Directory authentication only for this server. However, enabling this option will disable SQL Server authentication. So select save. Now let's go back to Management Studio. So now I can attempt login in again. So I'm going to select connect, specify the password for the account, and then select sign in. However, before you can connect successfully to Management Studio with the AAD account, you need to sign into Azure portal with the account that you want to log in with and ensure that you enable multi-factor authentication. Now that we are logged in as an AAD admin user, we can try creating the user account. However, when I execute this, it should fail because this session is still connected to the SQL admin session. So these things happen sometimes. So now you have to create a new session to the database 
from the AAD login user. So expand databases, right click on the database and then select new query. Now let's space. Now let's execute the query again. The command was executed successfully. So if you expand the database, expand security, expand users, you should now be seeing the AAD user which was created. Now we can try logging to the database as the MR user. So let's copy this username, select connect, select database engine, and then we're going to keep the same as your active directory with MFA. And now I'm going to select connect. Specify the password for the account and then select sign in. However, I'm not expected to be able to log in successfully. So I need to log into my account, right? To enable multi-factor authentication because it is not yet configured even though I set it for the account. So I'm going to select next here and this is what will happen if you do not configure multi-factor authentication. So now I'm going to open the browser, log into my account, right? And then enable multi-factor authentication and then I will be able to connect with that user account. So I'm going to head back to my browser now and then sign in with my user account. So I can close this for now. Use another account. Specify the username that you want to connect with. Then select next. Specify your password and then sign in. So I'm going to select next to set up my multi-factor authentication. So here you can download the Microsoft Authenticator app or you can choose to use a different authenticator app. I already have the Google Authenticator up on my mobile phone, so that is what I'll be using. So I'm going to select, I want to use a different authenticator app. So here I'm going to select next. I'm going to open the app and then scan the QR code. Once you have scanned the QR code, you should be seeing a six digit code on your mobile phone. So we'll select next. And here I'm going to provide the six digit code. And then select next. Select done. Now we can go back to management studio and sign in to our Azure SQL database. So the operation was cancelled. Select OK. Now let's connect again. Specify your password and select sign in. So here we have a very interesting error. So previously we were able to successfully create the user on the database and we are able to log in successfully. But now why do we have a login failure for the user? This is because the user was created at the database level and not at the instance level. So what we need to do to resolve this is select OK, right? And in the connections parameter, we need to specify the database that we are connecting to, which is Udemy DP300. As this is the database the user was created in. Now let's select connect and we should be able to successfully connect to the database. Expand the Udemy DP300. Let's view tables. Now wait, where are the tables? We can't view any of the tables. So now we need to grant the user access to be able to view the tables. However, on the Adriana's connection, if we expand tables, we can see the tables within the database. Before we take a deep dive into granting permissions, we're going to be taking a look at authentication and authorization in the next lecture.